Hello. This video is going to be eternal destruction or hell, universalism, and mystics. <clears throat> For the final truth in any matter, we should always go to the word of Jesus. Now, in the King James Version, it says Matthew, in Matthew 24, 25, excuse me, 46, and these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into life eternal. Now, for as long as I can remember, this has been preached that unless you accept Jesus as your Lord and ask for forgiveness of sin in your life, you would spend eternity in hell. And uh, this has been the, the norm of preaching for as long as I can remember. Now, for, at first, upon first glance at this Bible verse, you would be compelled to agree with that assumption. But we really need to reconcile this verse to what Paul says to the church in Colossians chapter 1, verse 20. And having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself, by him I say, whether they be things in the earth or things in the heavens. So if a large number of people go into everlasting punishment, how can they also be reconciled to Jesus as well? Let's turn back to the verse in Matthew to find our answer. The Greek for everlasting is aeonios, which actually means an age. Now, so what is the word for eternal? In Strong's Greek lexicon, G126, aeidios means ever during or eternal. And where is it used? Romans chapter 1, verse 20. His eternal, aeidios, power and Godhead, referring obviously to God himself. And again, in Jude 1 and 6, angels which kept not their first estate, he has reserved in everlasting aedios chains under darkness, eternal. Now, that then, that verse agrees with the account in the book of Enoch with the fallen angels, the ones in, uh, described in Genesis chapter 6, that's sons of God that came unto the daughters of men. And in the book of Enoch, it says that they are held in eternal, everlasting chains of darkness. So, let's also observe in 1 Peter 3, 18 through 20. Now, this is one that I have asked people to explain to me uh, what they feel like it is. So, for Christ also has suffered once for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit, by which also he went and preached unto the spirits in prison, which sometime were disobedient when once the long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah, while the ark was preparing, where in a few, that is, eight souls, were saved by water. Now, so, just bring it down into simple terms. So the disobedient people who perished by water in Noah's day were preached unto by Jesus himself. Do we agree? Now, a lot of people will use a lot of slick theology and reasoning and say that's not so. That's not what happened at all. But when you just read what's on the line, that's pretty well what I read. I want to share something interesting with you, something that I felt challenged to investigate. And this is called JC for your research, so that's what I do. In 2348 BC is the date of the flood, or supposedly the flood. Okay, <clears throat> so uh, so uh, when you look at 2348 BC, it's before Christ, obviously. Now, if you'll take that number and divide it by the average age uh, of a human, 70, as it was uh, said somewhere, and I can't remember where that is, lo and behold, you come up with a number 33 in about yeah, a little better than a half. But isn't it interesting that Jesus was in the flesh for 33 years and crucified and is in, at the age of 33? 33 times 70. Now, is this how many lifetimes an age is? I don't know. 
I'm not going to say that. I'm not going to make that claim. I just thought it was a very interesting number to come up with. So, like I said, this is hypothetical, and it's just something that the Holy Spirit quickened to me to check out, and I did. Now, in the Word, there is a stream of fire that proceeds forth from the throne of God, and that's in Daniel chapter 7 and verse 9. Now, it's also spoken of, now, in Galatians chapter 6 and verse 7, that be not deceived, God is not mocked, whatsoever man sows, that shall he also reap. So you got to deal with that. And and we got to deal with something else that God has. And it, and it's it, and it's a good positive side, although sometimes it doesn't sound like it. Is God has a just weight and a just balance as is spoken in Proverbs chapter 11 and verse 1. My position within all of this is that those who refuse Christ and or oppose him all the way through their life unto death will experience the fiery justice of God for an age, not an eternity. Next, let me emphatically state that Jesus went to preach deliverance to those in prison. Eternity is about reconciliation. Judgment and justice is about reconciliation and restoration. It's not God's plan for eternity to destroy mankind and those that oppose him. Because you see, we have free will. We have free choice. And God honors that free will and that free choice. But he also has to, how knows how to lead us and guide us in the paths of righteousness. And that's what happens, although it seems like it's just for the purposes of destruction and just like a, a God is not like us. He's not looking for revenge and vengeance and all that. Although it says, give no place to venge wrath, but let vengeance is mine, says the Lord. But that's God's brand of vengeance, tempered in love. Hallelujah. Now, now let me introduce another term, which would some would claim that I'm telling you or sharing with you, and that's universalism. Universalism and their basic belief is that all of mankind will be saved. This is not to be confused with Unitarianism, which is all paths lead to God. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. He is the door and the pathway to life. No one comes to the Father unless they come through Jesus. Before I go any further, let me also briefly explain another relatively obscure teaching called the trading floor. Hear now the word of the Lord to be to the anointed cherub in Ezekiel 28, verse 16. By the multitude of your merchandise, the merchandise in Hebrew is Rekula, trade, have filled the midst of you with violence, and you have sinned. God values the ability of choice, and Satan and the angels even have the ability of choice. But Satan chose to speak this out in Isaiah 14, and God spoke this out about Satan, that you said this, and it's recorded of him. It's the five wills, I wills of Satan. I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will be worshipped upon the mount of the congregation, and I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Satan traded his job to gather worship to be given to Yahweh to gather worship for himself. Psalms 82 and 1, God stands in the congregation of the mighty and judges amongst the gods, little gods. This describes the council of angels who were judges, and Satan was once one of those angels. Satan traded giving counsel to others for God to the counsel against God. He was kicked out of heaven as being profane and gathered up into the earth and second heavens. So now, God creates mankind and places them in the Garden of Eden to tend it. The command, you shall not eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So let's revisit the temptation in the Garden because it's the same generally as the temptation of Jesus. For God does not know, in Genesis 3 and 5, does know that when you eat of its fruit, then your eyes will be open and you shall be as gods. We need to note that the word here is as gods little gods, godlings, same as those in the Psalm 82 council. In short, Satan is offering Eve a place in his kingdom 
not the position of God himself, is also offering a new way of seeing things. Now, the trading floor was open to mankind. Throughout our history, mankind has traded out the worship of God and the principles of God for the worship of creation, Satan, themselves, and the knowledge of evil. This trading floor has introduced iniquity in family lines and opened the door for the curses mentioned in Deuteronomy. Satanic gatekeepers set up at these doors to trap family lines and even sections of society in these curses. When we get stayed, we still have to deal with those gatekeepers or strong men. There are people who have lived in these curses and bondages their whole lives unto creation. Now, I'm going to end that and I'm going to have to pick this up at a later time. So be best friends and 